uh, we covered until the portfolio strategic management, right? And uh, naturally, we have got five more chapters to go. Governance is the fourth chapter, and we will move on. And I expect that we do three chapters today, if possible. Okay. Anyways, portfolio governance is what we are going to talk about today. And in our agenda, we have got these topics. It is exactly according to the standard for project management. These are the six basic headings for that. And you might understand that in all of the lect uh, all of the chapters we have covered so far, generally this is the pattern. For this each is the chapter. what? Oh, the generally, pattern. Yeah. Okay. This is the pattern. We have an overview, we have a basic definition of the thing, that uh, how does the guiding principles of portfolio, which guiding principles apply to this specific topic. And then naturally, then we dig deeper into the subject. So here we will talk about the concept of governance. Uh, although in our initial discussion about governance, I have uh, amply made it clear to you what does governance mean? So uh, you already know what uh, uh, what we mean when we say governance and what is portfolio governance. Anyways, we will dig deeper into this. We will have effective portfolio governance design factors. We will have portfolio governance roles and so on and so forth. So starting with our overview. The term governance is increasingly used. In the field of portfolio program and project management. Yes, of course, uh, because we are talking about OPM, organizational project management. Therefore, we are concentrating on portfolio program and project management. But governance is not a term only used for these things. Governance is something we have at uh, the organizational level, at the enterprise level, and even at the government level. And I hope uh, you do understand what I mean when I say governance. Can you just refresh me? What do you understand by governance? Um, general is guidance on how the portfolio is to act um, and the, 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 the rules and I must say expectations set over exactly. the portfolio processes. Yeah. The basic philosophy is the difference between governance and management. The people who actually run the show, they are the managers like project manager, program manager, project manager, up for that matter, operational managers. They are all management. They are not they are not governance people. They are provided instructions, rules, regulations, policies, KPIs, and all those things by the top level management, whichever is the top level management immediately above them. They provide them their governance structure. And why does this governance structure gets created? That is to ensure that to meet the strategic objectives of the organization, this, these are the governance guidelines being provided to the management as if whatever they do, they ultimately align themselves with the strategy of the organization, right? So governance does exist at the organizational level. And the management of the organization may be held by the CEO or whomsoever are sitting at top. Uh, running the show, who are managing the organization, those are the people who are governed by the governance. And then those people provide further governance downstairs to the departments of the organization. Naturally, the governance provided by these high, highest level management is uh, subordinated by the by the strategic governance and ultimately for departments, they establish these governance guidelines as if the departmental heads can 
manage their departments. And this, um, this uh, trickle down effect continues within the department. There could be a governance structure which is subordinated by the organizational and strategic governance and so on and so forth. Now, that is general concept of, of governance. Now, talking about the organizational project management, just like we have got governance at the strategic level, if we look at only not the operation thing, but the portfolio program and project, then portfolio governance comes under the organizational governance. And uh, that will always ensure that whatever are the organizational governance guidelines, whatever governance portfolio is going to establish must be subordinated to the organizational governance. Similarly, programs have their own governance, which is subordinated to the portfolio and the organizational governance. Then every project may have its own governance structure which might be detailed instructions to manage the project and that is subordinated by the program portfolio and the organizational governance. But the term yes. and yes. what it represents is frequently confused with notions associated with management. That is exactly why I clarified the difference between governance and management. Managers are the people who run the show, who establishes the rules for them, is the governance. And governance is coming from the next higher level. So, in this chapter, we are going to talk about the concept of governance versus management, the importance of principles, the guiding principles, key principles, you remember. We did talk about the key principles of portfolio. So portfolio management key principles, which principles apply to portfolio governance, we'll talk about that and how do they impact both governance and management activity? Because we are concerned about governance and management because governance and management are closely related. Managers do what they are governed to do but the instructions, the guidelines, they have been provided. The law, the rules, the regulations are coming through governance and management makes their own plans to execute those strategies. Third, how portfolio governance principles impact programs and projects within the portfolio. So if you think that within your portfolio, whatever governance structure you have been provided to run the portfolio to manage the portfolio how uh, as a portfolio manager you have to establish a governance structure for your programs and your projects which would be direct translation of the portfolio governance but it would be little more in detail with specific purpose of running the show or managing the programs and project. So this would include the values established at the top governance level. They will always be included. You just can't ignore a governance principle which has been provided to you at from the organizational level. And you can't say that at my portfolio level or my program level in my program governance that principle, uh, organizational governance principle does not apply. That is wrong. Every governance principle provided by the organization does apply to in the hierarchy of governance. So uh, these governance principles impact programs and projects within the portfolio in addition to their value as part of component based methodologies to increase the chances of component success. So when we do have a governance structure for running a component that is a project or a program, ultimately that ensures that we coincide with the strategic values or objectives of the organization. So governance is a assurance tool which ensures that everything within the organization 
is actually aligned with the organizational strategy. Governance activities encapsulate and enable the application of portfolio principle to the actual work of portfolio management. And for that, naturally, we will cover uh, the relevant portfolio principles a little later. Okay, so having this overview and a little bit of introduction about the governance and revising how the trickle down effect of this governance happens within an organization. Let's specifically talk about now the portfolio governance. Now, portfolio governance are those set of practices, functions and processes within a framework based on a set of principles that are fundamental norms, rules and values that guide. Now, from where that set of principles is coming to the portfolio manager, basically this is coming from the organizational governance, which may not be mentioned here, but your the portfolio governance structure you are going to establish will be subordinated by the strategic or organizational governance right so the set of principles are coming from there but specific further details about how are you intending to run your portfolio which was not the subject of the strategic governance or the organizational governance now you have to add those specific details related to the governance of the portfolio that is what we are doing here that will guide the portfolio management activities because governance provides the guidance how to manage so if the governance is at the portfolio level the portfolio management will strictly abide by whatever the portfolio governance has been established in order to optimize investments and meet organizational strategic and operational goals that is what the portfolio wants this is the job of the portfolio to optimize investments into the various initiatives or components of the portfolio and thus meet the organizational strategic and operational goals and how do you do that that is given in the governance structure of the portfolio which is subordinated by the organizational governance are you okay with this uh, this definition yes do yes. you want to comment on it or you want to elaborate on it no, I, understand. I understand okay good if that is clear the term governance framework that is uh, that is a whole big thing I'm, we are talking about the portfolio governance there. I'm not only talking about uh, the organizational governance. I'm talking about the framework of, you know, running the show within the portfolio that is provided by the governance, uh, by the portfolio governance. So this portfolio governance framework includes how are you going to oversee the things, how the decisions are to be made, within the portfolio, how the controls are to be exercised and integration function, various components, how do they integrate with each other? How do you seek results out of them and convert them into the satisfaction of strategic objectives by which governance processes and tasks are directed toward achievement of portfolio governance objectives. So whatever was the portfolio governance objective, these are all the means through which this framework provides you the means by which your portfolio governance objectives can be achieved. Okay, moving on to the next topic. This is the guiding principles. Again, I will refer you back to the uh, earlier thing where we talked about the key principles of portfolio management. Right, there were, I think there were eight different principle, principles listed there. I had shown that slide twice earlier. So I'm not showing that slide here again. But, you know, uh, some of those principles, not all, eight of them, 
some of those principles will apply to portfolio governance and we'll talk about that <clears throat> governance domain is very different from the other domain because governance is the framework right it's not like mm -hmm. strategy strategy is different governance is a framework it is the whole big thing the book of law a book of regulations for running the portfolio right so this is a framework strategy was strategy management which we studied in the earlier chapter uh, was a slightly different concept that was trying to translate how the organizational strategy will be trans transferred or will be executed right although uh, that translation also becomes part of this governance framework right so both of those things are happening uh, in tandem they're happening in parallel the uh, portfolio strategic management as well as the portfolio governance but governance is the basic framework which must be provided before you can start managing the portfolio that means strategic management should start earlier than governance because that is to uh, translate the objectives of the organization into the portfolio and by, uh, 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 while the strategic management is going on governance framework will be created and within that governance framework are according to that governance framework that strategy and those rules are then going to be implemented this subtle difference also reflects which guiding principles are used to establish effective portfolio governance not all but which one of those portfolio management as we have studied earlier lists down eight principles relating to portfolio however one principle directly relates to governance only one principle directly relates to governance uh, out of the eight principles we have studied already and that one is listed in the bottom line enable transparency responsibility accountability sustainability and fairness now can you make some sense out of it how this principle is good and useful for governance of the portfolio or for that matter management of the portfolio yes please yeah so uh, i'm looking at so i'm just trying to further trying define to further, further delineate the strategic management and the governance uh so i'd say the strategic management is setting up what the portfolio actually is you know the the, the details of it um what it looks like uh, making sure it aligns with the overall strategy and yes. governance itself is is the book of rules like i said how 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 it will act like what are the what are the yeah. rules and the reason exactly. and, and and it's you know the transparency the governance i agree should enable transparency responsibility accountability so in, in in one aspect the governance should almost be the same no matter what the strategy is i mean it, it's it's it, it'll drill down into a lower level depending on the details of it but in, in essence every portfolio should have the same rules around their governance to make sure it encompasses these items where the strategy of the portfolio would definitely change based yeah. on the intent yeah and then the management but, is just the management the, the execution but, of it yeah but be mindful of the fact whenever the strategy changes that might need to tweak certain portfolio governance rules okay right so although although the governance is strictly right from top downwards but still if the direction of the organization has changed the strategy of the organization has changed the governance structure may be altered accordingly but you were right in saying that in general portfolio governance principles the guiding and the, the rules are the set of rules they are, are, are 
almost remain the same. They don't change very often, except for there is a major change in the major shift in the strategy of the organization. Okay. Right. All right. Yep. Yeah. Okay. Uh, coming back to the concept of governance. Portfolio governance is established based on uh, just remember this principles, rules and values. Principles, rules and values. You establish those. As if. To, to do what? Transparency, who is accountable for doing what, who is responsible for what and so on and so forth. And ultimately it helps you make right decisions, decision making, oversight, control, integrate all those things which are required to manage. Manage the portfolio. You are providing rules and principles around that. So governance can be viewed from different perspectives as a system of controls. As a set of processes. And as a set of processes and relationships. How do they relate with each other? Now I have amply made it clear to you the difference between the governance and management. Management is how, what you do and governance is how you do it. Right? What are the laws? What are the rules? What are the principles behind it? Establishing those principles, those that framework is governance. And then according to that governance framework, Getting the things done is management. Governance is associated with decision making, oversight, control, and integration, whereas management is described as working within the limit. You have to work within those rules, right? Those set of rules or framework, you cannot get out of that range. Whatever has been mandated. In the governance framework, the management has to abide by that with the overall aim of achieving the organizational objective. Naturally, uh, this governance, the portfolio governance, would be inherited from the organizational governance. So, organizational governance is aligned with the organizational strategy until and unless organizational strategy has a major shift. The organizational governance does change only then portfolio governance will be affected. Otherwise, as you said, in general, governance usually does not change very often. Yeah. Got that? Yes, that, that, that's a good now, explanation. Let's see, let's see how did your portfolio governance, you are a portfolio manager, and naturally, if you remember, I told you earlier, Portfolio manager is a manager, not not a governor. Portfolio manager does not write these principles. You as a portfolio manager are absolutely not responsible for developing this governance framework, but your boss, whomsoever he is, your boss is responsible for giving you the this guideline. This governance framework has to be provided to the portfolio manager. Now, what is the role of portfolio manager in establishing governance framework? Is there any role you think the portfolio manager has in establishing governance framework? Yes, Stephen? Um, they would receive it and implement it. Mm -hmm. But if if your boss wants you to help him establish the governance framework, so he can ask for your help. But remember, just like the, uh, a project manager was never the author of the charter. Similarly, in this case, the portfolio manager is not going to be author of the charter. Your sponsor or your boss is going to be issuing the charter and therefore before that charter can be issued, a governance structure must be in place. And primarily that is the responsibility of the portfolio sponsor or governing body 
whomsoever is responsible for that, but they can always seek help of the portfolio manager, seek the input from the portfolio manager uh, as if the framework can, when that framework is being developed, portfolio manager may be involved or engaged. But in no way, portfolio manager can claim to be the author of governance framework. The portfolio governance framework is not authored by the portfolio manager because why? Portfolio manager is a manager, right? Managers do not develop the structure. I got it. Okay, well, portfolio manager, and just like you said, managers are executing. It's the same with a portfolio, although it's at a higher level than the manager. Exactly. It's still the portfolio manager, not the sponsor. Okay. Exactly. Um, very, very good. All right. That's good. Uh, so you said, did I hear you say the governance has to be in place before the charter? Is that what you said? Yes, of course. Of course. Of course. The right. sponsor is responsible because until and unless uh, uh, the organizational governance has been translated and elaborated in form of the portfolio governance, the charter cannot be issued because the sponsor or the governance board or steering committee won't know uh, how this portfolio can be run. Right? So right. these are the governance practices which are established, established before the portfolio charter can be issued. Okay, I'm going to have to think about that one. So, I, I, okay, having, having said all that, said the charter is simply recognizing recognizing the need and allowing resources to be allocated. Oh, no, no. Recognizing the need is in the business case. The charter is the authorization given to the manager to go ahead. To go ahead with this initiative. If it is a portfolio, you have been assigned the portfolio and now you have to do it. So, if not detailed, but at least that at the high level, you have been mandated to do it now. You are declared as a portfolio manager, you have been given the responsibility. This is just not a simple recognition. Okay. Right? Okay. This is, the orders have been given to you. Charter is the order to the portfolio manager that you are the boss now. You are the manager. You are the portfolio manager, and this is your objective. You go ahead. These are the principles we are giving you. This is your portfolio governance. Go ahead with it. Okay. Are you All right. with me on that? Yeah. Okay. Now, uh, a related subject which comes to the mind that is, of course, portfolio manager has been given a portfolio governance framework by the steering committee. Does the portfolio manager has anything to do with, with the lower level governances? I answered that question earlier, but uh, uh, is portfolio manager a boss of his components, his or her components, isn't it? Portfolio manager is a boss for, for all the projects and programs or the components under the portfolio. Agree or not? Yes. Yes. Within your portfolio, you are managing various components. How do you intend governing those various components, projects, programs, sub-portfolios, and operations within your portfolio, do you not want a governance framework for each of those components? Yes. Yes. Yes, Stephen. Yes. Can you hear me? Yeah. Yes. I am yes. asking you. You do have, you have been provided a governance framework to run your portfolio and you have been declared the portfolio manager. Now you are mandating your components. You are authorizing or chartering your components. 
which are the programs, which are the projects, which are the operations, our sub portfolios. So when you are chartering them, are you not supposed to provide them a relevant governance structure to them? Yes, I, I agree. So uh, looking at the portfolio framework has been given to you, you will further elaborate it and develop the program governance okay. framework for yeah, your program managers, sense. a project governance framework for your project managers and so on and so forth. Got it? Oh, OK, so I got it. So, yeah, similar, similar to what you said is that the yes. program governance has its own rules, but it, it's in the portfolio and the project. It's the same to where the portfolio manager would they, they could set their own governance for the portfolio, but it still has to be within the governance that was provided to them. Also. Exactly. Exactly. OK, exactly. yeah. You got it. You OK, got it. that makes sense. So this is this is this was a very important concept you need needed to understand. There is yes. an umbrella effect, the organizational governance, under that the portfolio governance, under that the program governance, under that the project governance. So all of these frameworks are assurances as if the relevant management structure can perform most efficiently and effectively. And there are checks and balances everywhere. OK, so that makes from, sense. From the portfolio perspective, it is to ensure that they integrate and align to the principles and objectives of the portfolio. All the subordinate governances, they integrate and align to the principles and objectives of the portfolio. That is what the portfolio manager is going to ensure. To achieve this, the component program and project methodologies should include governance principles along with the management principle. That is now we are talking about establishing a governance framework or a structure for our subordinate components, which I just mentioned to you. And the same big governance principles we have, you know, um, we have entertained like transparency and um, responsibility and accountability and all that should help avoid and also resolve ambiguities, issues, and conflicts that may arise during a component life cycle. So I am trying to uh, streamline a component life cycle by providing them their relevant governance framework. I am giving them, if I am authorizing a program, I'm gi giving the program governance framework our structure to that program manager and similarly for, for, for any other component. Especially when the endeavor has a low outcome predictability in a complex environment. Right? You know, naturally at the portfolio level, things are uh, going to be complex. You are dealing with hundreds of components. Things are very complex. They have got a lot many interactions. It's very difficult to understand so these governance principles are these governance frameworks actually serve as tools to streamline everything and also naturally the accountability and responsibilities are shifted downwards are you fine so far yes yes very good now with armed with this knowledge now just look at this diagram. This will explain everything from top to bottom. We do have an organizational governance at top, which is the governance framework for the whole organization, not only for the portfolio or the program or the project. It's a whole organization, the book of rules and regulations, of, uh, how this organization is supposed to run was was established even before the organization was formed. You got me? Even before the organization was formed, organizational governance framework must have been developed at that stage and have must have been revised many times over the life of the organization. <clears throat> Within that organization, looking at the current strategic objectives, 
portfolio has been mandated and the governance objective have been given to the portfolio this is your objective this is what you need to do so the portfolio will develop its own governance structure its own governance structure to run sub portfolios programs and projects right so yes. as far as the sub portfolios are concerned like portfolio b here it is simple because whatever were the portfolio level governance the sub portfolios will emulate the same governance at a little detail level so if any instructions are to be provided to sub portfolio managers that can be provided otherwise the portfolio governance will, will apply to the sub portfolios as well but as far as the programs and projects are concerned we have to provide them separately a governance framework for each of them the program should have uh, program governance and project should have project governance and naturally governance objectives uh, must be translated into the program governance and then the management of the program and projects come in within the program there could be projects and interestingly uh, although we can have a pmo kind of a structure which is helping you develop all kinds of governances all the various levels of governances a pmo kind could be there they could they could help you develop that but uh, as far as the responsibility of uh, responsibility of establishing the governance is concerned uh, generally a program manager is responsible for providing portfolio sorry uh, for providing the project governance framework or structure to its project a portfolio is responsible for providing a uh, program governance framework and for the independent project the project governance framework to its component and so on and so forth and this is all governed by transparency responsibility accountability fairness and stability so the out of the eight principles one gov gov one uh, one principle out of the eight portfolio management principles the one principle which applies here has five governance parts in it uh, transparency responsibility accountability fairness and sustainability got it yes this diagram is very important and so far whatever we have discussed so far this is all very important to understand the governance structure so please consider this diagram time and again uh, review it again it will remind you what we have discussed here today okay what is the impact of portfolio governance on programs and projects now this is the further uh, explanation of what we have already talked about right so uh, we can just quickly skim through it otherwise we need not you know discuss it in such a detail yeah i, I think i understand yeah for example it says governance principle help create value system we agree with that don't we yes a value system is something uh, uh, when we try to manage something how do we manage so you should have some principles in place so governance principle basically help you do that yeah create a value system senior management typically at the broad level defines organizational governance that is the big story um, uh, how the top level management senior management executive management they are establishing the organizational governance and then because portfolio governance practice incorporate the governance principle of the organization they flow down the trickle down effect the organization govern governance to the portfolio portfolio governance to the program and project and so on and so forth and in this process we define uh, the governance roles at various levels governance roles at the portfolio level at the program level and so on and so forth 
how do we measure the effectiveness of a governance practice throughout the portfolio is dependent on the mentalities rationalities and ways of interaction chosen by those in governance roles basically we have defined the governance and given this guidance to the managers and we have told them what are their roles and responsibilities remaining within that you know governance structure abiding by those things they have their own decision power they can they they may know how to manage their issues so they plan at their own end therefore i would say governance is not very you know detailed uh, we must leave out some space for the managers to plan their things governance cannot be detailed governance could be cursory governance could be uh, the basic major principles you are you are establishing but the actually the work has to be done by managers so managers must be given uh, enough to see in par as if they can apply those governance principles the portfolio governance framework uh, performance domain is shown in one of the six performance management domains uh, we know that like you know strategy like stakeholder engagement governance is also considered as one of the domains governance impacts all the other portfolio domains so that is interesting because governance is something which applies to the whole portfolio so uh, the governance will apply to strategy will apply to everything all the six domains will be impacted by governance so i can say that governance is more like a cloud encompassing or encapsulating all other domains of the portfolio management governance domain is comprised of four governance functions and these are now if you remember the five governance principles were transparency responsibility accountability fairness and sustainability and we have already discussed it uh what does it provide us decision making oversight control and integration for all the components of the portfolio we are able to make better decisions oversee what is happening control it and integrate it these are the four functions the, these are the four governance functions so there are five governance principles as i listed to you and four governance functions if you really want to you know um, um, somehow uh, understand it so the next four sentences explain each one of them the decision making function includes the processes and activities that provide the overall governance structure for delegation of management authority for the portfolio and its components so how the decisions are to be made this is encapsulated in the decision making function then oversight support the leadership and direction for the portfolio and its components we oversee as if the portfolio is being steered in the right direction that is called that is due to the oversight function control provides the processes and activities used to monitor measure and report control is about monitoring and control right monitor measure and report on the portfolio and its component that is a control function and lastly there are many component so putting it all together integrating those into the, uh, for the support of the strategic alignment of the portfolio and its component that that is where integration comes into play so i hope the lesson we get out of it is five principles and four uh, governance function so we have covered uh, the concept of governance in this way we talked about the definition we talked about the governance impact on programs and project 
like integration, methodology, incorporation, and flow of governance principles. Then we talked about the hierarchy of governance, organization into portfolio, roles in governance, and then we talked about the portfolio governance, other domain in portfolio, like performance domains, or do they relate to the various other performance domains? I said uh, governance applies to all the performance domains of the portfolio. And governance function, uh, they have got five principles, not listed here, they should be, <coughs> but their functions are decision making, oversight, control, and integration. <coughs> So that summarizes the concept of governance. So good so far. Um, I got a question. Hmm? I've got the, um, you know, the transparency, accountability, sustainability, and fairness. And then I've got the functions are decision making, oversight, and control. I'm trying to delineate mm -hmm. what those are. You see, the governance principle is something which is in the at the back of your mind when you okay. start planning for something. Yes. What do you want from your portfolio? You want it to remain transparent. You want to assign responsibilities. You want to assign accountabilities. You want to be uh, uh, to have a fair system, fairness, and your Whatever you function, you want sustainability in it. We should be yes. predictive. We should be reproductive. We should be able to reproduce our results, right? So these are kind of a um, kind of a higher vision for the portfolio governance. So these things are at the back of the mind when establishing the governance uh, framework at the portfolio level or whatever level. You understand that much? Yes. Now, these things will result in ultimately when they will be applied and a governance structure is in place, that will result in four functions <laughs> as listed here. When you have got transparency, fairness, and all, you will be able to make better decisions. You will be able to oversee the things better. You can monitor and control them, and you can integrate them. Okay. Does it make the thing clear? Yes. Wonderful. Okay. Effective portfolio governance design factors. Well, when we are developing a portfolio governance structure, basically we are we are designing we are designing the portfolio governance structure. So what all should be considered? but all should be considered for an effective portfolio governance. So portfolio governance design will have a significant influence on whether the portfolio can consistently meet its objective throughout its life cycle. And that is exactly uh, what we want. Sustainability, consistency. Sustainability is about consistency, right? In extreme cases, governance practices that are not based on organizational governance principles, I mean, they are the further elaboration because the organizational governance framework even, uh, would be even more sketchier than the portfolio governance framework. Portfolio governance framework is much more detailed than the organizational governance. Although it abides by the organizational governance framework, but uh, more detailed information about the portfolio governance can only be find, found in this governance structure. Organization governance structure may have very cursory guidelines about, about uh, how the portfolios will function in the organization. But portfolio governance is to be elaborated. So in extreme cases, governance practices are not based on organizational governance principles and are inappropriate for the type of portfolio will increase the risk of component failure and jeopardize the overall success. Um, I'm actually I don't really agree with the whole statement uh, because uh, that might mean that the organizational governance 
practices or principles may not apply to portfolio. I don't agree with that part. But what I am saying, <laughs> trying to say here is, although um, um, organizational governance, governance framework or principles, uh, they might be broader and not detailed, whereas portfolio yeah. may have to take down yeah. and establish more detailed framework. That is exactly what the point, point is. Because uh, just based on organizational governance, yes, of course, you can, uh, you may be failing the component or jeopardizing the overall success. So you have to elaborate further and establish governance principles, governance practices at, at the portfolio level, which are much more detailed than the organizational governance. So practically, I, um, I understand that organizational governance may not be directly applicable to portfolio level because portfolio level may not have been defined in such detail as is required to manage the competence. That is exactly why we need to have these various layers of uh, governance at every level. There are many factors to consider when designing portfolio governance practices, and those factors are, uh, there might be some legislative environment in a country you are living, there is a legislation, or there is a company legislation, or something like that. So naturally, you have to abide by that. I would say they are the uh, kind of enterprise environmental factors, which will affect your portfolio anyways. So look at the legislative environment, Look at the regulatory environment around you. you know, regulatory environment is essentially being trickling down to you through the organizational governance, right? So in a way, regulations have been given to you in the organizational governance and you are further elaborating. So naturally, there has to be a regulatory environment. Okay, naturally, uh, we are allowing you that when you develop your portfolio governance, when you design it, you can have your decision making structure. You will develop your own decision making structure, the accountabilities and responsibilities. But look at what are the rules within the organization. Is there any guidance on the decision making hierarchy? If there is any broad guidance on that, you cannot defy that. You have to remain within that mechanism because that is the law of the land that is within the organizational uh, uh, organization has mandated that all the decisions taken in this organization could be done in this manner. So that manner will have to be adopted, although it can be further elaborated, but it has to be adopted. This will, uh, this will be a major design factor. Then uh, you have to ensure that your portfolio governance remain in alignment with the organizational governance, naturally, very much, because this is created out of that. That is a child of the organizational governance. Portfolio governance is a child of the organizational governance. So there has to be a hereditary in it. Right? So, and yes. <laughs> last but not the least is alignment with the organizational culture. In a way, uh, uh, this could have been in the regulatory or legisl legislative environment, but culture is something dicey. Culture is the belief system people develop serving in an organization that might not have been written in so many words. So whatever is the organizational culture, whether they are written rules, regulations, or legislation, or they are, uh, you know, secrets being passed from heart to heart. So we have to align with the organization culture as well. I hope you understand all of these five factors. Yes. Any comments yes. on that? No, no, it makes sense. OK, um, can we have a little break here? Yeah. For about, uh, say, 15 minutes? Yeah, no problem. No problem. Okay, so we'll, we will meet after 15 minutes.
uh, that is basically my prayer time and you can have some tea <laughs> okay okay thank you <laughs> okay then take care and i am switching off my camera and